Hey folks, welcome back. Sorry I've been away for quite so long. Um, you'll see why in a minute. Um, I have a very big journal to show you. Um, before I do, um, I think I'm in the mood for a ramble today. So, um, if you know, if you're not interested in background, please skip ahead. Probably about ten minutes. So, um, for those of you who feel you. <laughs> you need to stay <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> there's a few things that I wanted to explain okay so um, I've called it steampunk Dickensian and um, I know that as crafters we all I'm sure know what steampunk is and what did surprise me was that um, while this project has been strewn across my dining room for the last month and you know it was everywhere um anyone who came to the house uh we get a lot of drop-ins and visitors so anyone who's here you know naturally they say oh what are you working on and um i'm surprised that actually nobody knows what steampunk is um you know if they're not of that crafting world and um you know, I say to people, oh, I'm sure you'll know it if you see it and I'll show them pictures on the phone or something. And they, they still, you know, never seen it before. So I found that quite interesting. Um, I think that uh, we need to spread the word, guys. So um, I hope that my journal will spark some interest. Um, now then what shall I talk about first okay um, my first introduction to um, Mr Dickens and his work was um, when I was at school we had a school assignment and um, it, I can't remember exactly it was something like uh, read and discuss a book um, that reflected some some historical angle um, about the time it was written. Um, I can't remember the specifics, but I wasn't sure what to read. So when I'm not sure, I, I always go and ask my big brother. <laughs> He's very clever. And um, so I went to sit to him and said, what, what do you think I should read? And he said, you could try Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Um, my brother is one of those people who, um, he seems to know everything, you know, um, whatever the conversation is, uh, you always come away from it having, you feel like you've learned something that, or an angle or a possibility that you'd never considered before. He's a really interesting person to listen to. Um, so anyway, hard time. So I went away and, and I read that and it was, oh my goodness, the most boring book I've ever not boring, depressing, the most depressing book um, that I've ever read. Uh, I was probably about 14 at the time. Um, so I ploughed through because it was for school. And at the end of it, you know, I said to him, well, oh, <laughs> what did you give me that for? And he said, well, you know, you didn't ask for cheerful, you asked for accurate or historical, whatever it was, which was quite true. Um, so I thought to myself, you know, if I never read another Dickens, I would die happy. Um, and Mr. Dickens and I parted company for quite a number of years. Um, what I need to just mention is that um, when you grow up with parents, uh, foreign parents, my, my parents are not from this country, even though I grew up here you get a very different um, cultural immersion. You, you, you just don't get the same influence that, um, uh, you know, a child with native parents would get. Um, and so all of my um, English culture, as it were, has come from what a teacher happens to have mentioned or, you know, what I've learned myself. Um, so uh, you get a very different experience. So these are things that I couldn't ask my parents about um, because, you know, that they had no um, frame of reference. Um, 
so I'm not sure actually what happened when I got older. I think I sort of realised who Dickens was. I um, had no clue. Um, he just seemed like a really depressed person. <laughs> um, but of course, um, as you get older, you realise that he wasn't writing about these awful um, experiences and times because he enjoyed it. It was He, he was actually a great um, sociologist, a great anthropologist, um, and was very interested in bettering um, the plight of the poor. Um, so... Um, one thing I did uh, learn that I didn't know before um, with steampunk that some people actually uh, object to steampunk because of its moral um, implications um, they say that it was um, built on the back the Victorian era was built on the backs of um, an oppressed uh, working class um, you know which is true um, so the connection to Dickens is that he wrote about the workhouse. He wrote about, um, I can't remember what Hard Times was about. I think it was about the mill workers in the north. Um, so very difficult times for people. The Industrial Revolution came along, pushed out um, cottage industry and pushed people into the workhouse. Um, so his angle was to... Um, make people aware of how the poor were living you know what what um difficulties they they had in their lives and uh, he worked for change um and steampunk for me is uh it's a great what if story um you, you, it never happened for one so I, I don't object to it. You, you, you can't object to something that didn't happen. Um, and, you know, it's a fantasy. Um, it's about what if. It's about what if one person had changed the course of history. What if uh, society had taken a different turn or some new discovery, um, you know, set us on a different course or some new technology that we've discovered. How would it have changed people? And it's about exploration and discovery and using knowledge and science and new challenges and it's all about doing it with style of course <laughs> so um i i have no objection on those grounds and, and i'm sure that most of us view it the same way just as a, a fantasy just as a, a, a style a, a genre almost um and so I, I went back to Dickens um, as an adult. Um, I'm not sure what made me go back, um, but I decided to try um, David Copperfield. And it was like the best book ever. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. And I realised then, uh, as I had become older, um, what his purpose behind writing was. Um, so David Copperfield really recommend if you haven't read it. I had a big old smile on my face the whole way through the book. Um, so I, ho um, I hope some of that has made sense to you. Uh, I'm just going to pause to close the door. Okay, it was nice to hear the birds, but um, the school children have come out on the field now. Them pesky kids making noise and enjoying the sunshine. Okay, so... Um, the other thing that I wanted to um, talk about, which was also an influence on my take uh, on this subject, was um, H.G. Wells, and especially his Time Machine story. Uh, I don't know whether you've, you, you may have seen the movies, you may have read the book. Um, I've, I've seen the newer movie, the one with Guy Pearce. I haven't seen the older one because I've, I think I tended to avoid things that were a bit scary um, when I was younger. So um, the new film, if you haven't, I mean, I'm saying new, it's probably 15 years old now. Um, it's brilliant. It, it's such a good adaptation. Um, so I've seen the movie first and then I went, uh, in order to research for the journal, I went back to read the book. And I have to say it was really not what I expected at all. Um, it was kind of a little bit boring. Um, but the, you know, it's like nothing happens in the book, 
but it, it's just um, it, it's a kind of philosophical what if. Um, uh, it is about a time machine and he does travel in time. Um, what am I trying to say? It's almost kind of more like an essay um, of a what if. Um, he talks about society and its aspirations. He goes way, way, way into the future and meets the people that are living then. Um, he talks about bioengineering of animals and crops. It's really amazing, um, the concept behind the book. Um, such a clever man. Um, and he, he comes to this kind of social paradise in some respects. Um, but what has happened is that um, there's no knowledge, there's no education, there's no um, family unit, and there's there's no useful work. So he, he comes and he he meets this um, the people then and they've become this kind of weird passive race of creatures and they have no compassion, no attachments, no feelings. And he says, what does he say? He says the artistic spirit in mankind had faded into sorry had faded into contented inactivity. And the book reads um, almost as a warning for us to hold on to these things, to the, these things that make us human. And it's a very, it's a very forward thinking book. It's really interesting uh, in that respect, in a psychological respect, um, sociological, is that a word? Um, but as an action adventure, <laughs> really boring. Um, the film, on the other hand, is a fantastic adaptation. Um, it, it, it's really, it really holds true to the heart of the book, um, but you know, makes it a bit more exciting for the screen. Guy Pearce is brilliant in everything. I have to say, um, I really enjoy everything that he's in. Um, so that is Dickens. So Mr. Dickens and I are friends again, and that is Mr. H. G. Wells. And that is steampunk for me. Um, so I hope that you enjoy my take on it. Um, am I ready to open the book? <laughs> Let me just see how long it's been. 12 minutes, okay. All right. So a leather cover with um, some nice rusted material on the front. And here you will see a cog that turns, and see the writing here, it says, et scientium veritatis. And I've made these with um, layers of uh, die-cut paper or cardstock um, glued together so that it makes quite a thick cog. And you can see this is uh, like trapped in a layer um, in the middle of the cover. Um, I must say that uh, since it is made of cardstock, um, it's not going to last forever and ever. I think the cogs probably will get worn over time, but certainly plenty of um, play value in there and you can kind of poke that through with your finger. So I've just backed that with a bit of gold, some gold here as well, um, just to cover the little blank spot because you'll get, as you put your cover, if you want to try this, put your cover over, you'll get the board showing there. So you want to cover that up. Uh, this is cotton lace that was sent to me by the lovely Carol. Thank you, Carol. And um, I've just rusted it up and same here and the idea is that this person has used an old um, entomology book and found it and repurposed it so um, covered it with their own bits and filled it with their own bits and pieces so I've made this book plate I've covered with um, linen that I've hand dyed um, it is looking pale on the camera. It's a kind of a very pale green, actually. And carved out some little patterns and filled with gold. There's gold around here too. 
and so you can see it's a massive book there is what I did find I made this as a pen holder um, I wanted to put an antique pencil in here and the ones that I've got are just a little bit thick they do fit but it just restricts the movement a little bit so I thought it'd be better if you had something finer to put that in there that will be fine and then on the back like this so the leather goes all the way around there's some brads and some bits of string holding it together there's a brad missing here um, so you'll see lots of tears and rips and a little special little bit here So cool little thing there. Um, if you're worried about this scratching your table, um, you can just unscrew that very easily. Just unscrews the wrong way. And then um, what's left is flush with um, the surface of the book. So the old curiosity shop for the library card. And that's a massive pocket there. Now it's not easy to get this under the camera. Okay, I'm going to try and show you the charms. So as you can see, they kind of drape down as the book sits on its back like that, in these kind of drapey shapes. Lots of chains. I've concentrated on... Um, yeah, can't do this one-handed. I've concentrated on these kind of Victorian cut glass beads. That are very pretty. And then you get these drapes here. Um, and then a couple of charms. There's a globe. Some more glass beads. I've drilled a pen nib. And a, a vintage one. Um, this is a... Uh, I want to say gramophone, but it isn't, is it? It's a, I think it's a French horn or something. You know, the, the, just a steampunk charm. Um, binoculars black pearl and yeah I might have to put it down there yeah okay there's a dragonfly there's another drape here some little cog okay there's a reason people don't make books this big okay so Let's go inside. Actually, what I'm going to do, because it's kind of a bit slopey here. Um, Don't go away, guys. I'm just going to grab a book and put it under this cover. And I think that you will see better. Okay, um, the reason it doesn't lie flat is that there's a lot of stuff here that you'll see in a minute. Um, so there is, there's some special instructions that come with your book. <laughs> Don't you love it when your book comes with instructions? Okay, so I'll come to that in a minute. So there's a little concertina here. Uh, one feature of this book, or almost an anti-feature, is that there are no um, real samples. Um, most of my books, because they contain press flowers and things like that, um, they're often, I, I can't sell to um, some parts of the world. So I just wanted to make one, at least, that was available to everybody. Uh, this book is for sale, by the way. Um, this was a personal project, so um, I'll give you the details at the end. Um, so what I've done is just scanned some of my kind of bo little botanical tags and stuck them here. Um, if I can show you this. I managed to find some bronze um, sewing thread, which is very cool. Um, it looks really nice on the pages. 
don't know how well it's going to show. The reason that I like this bronze so much is that I just need to adjust the camera a little bit. Um, is that it's not too glittery and glitzy and sparkly so it's it's subtle it gives a really nice effect very very steampunk and so there's a tie here and that opens for a very deep you can see it's got a gusset pocket there and there's a wax seal which covers up a strong magnet so that whole lot just holds very easily on there um, so curious and curious, so cried Alice. She was so much surprised that for the moment she quite forgot how to speak good English. It occurred to me while um, doing this that if you're not a native English speaker, you probably don't realise that this is not a word, although it should be. <laughs> and this is one of these peculiar English um, rules uh, I, I don't know how anybody learns English who who hasn't grown up here it, it's such a curious language um so we would say <laughs> I think I think we would say more curious um so you know that's why it's funny this quote I like it and um, so Alice of course is is very iconic of um steampunk Alice also is a great what-if story, of course. This little section is its own signature. So I've done some Eva pockets. Um, I've made a little section here. You know how a lot of people say, um, I, I wouldn't want to write in it because it's, you know, I don't want to spoil it. Sometimes I like to have um, a little disposable removable section so you I mean you could even write your shopping list in there and you're still not spoiling the book because you can just replace it a little pocket here and here and that closes with a magnet some nice tabs on there and there's a pocket there with some extra paper and then this elastic just goes around the whole thing this charm hangs out the bottom and if you wanted I quite like it like this with the diagonals just um, goes around that middle tab I love this picture such a beautiful photograph Let me turn it so you can see her properly isn't she beautiful I've done lots and lots of bronze stitching around this one and some copper staples which look so cool I was really pleased to find those and this is the tricky part of the book um, when you get to this page with a dancer you because all the charms are attached almost all the charms are attached to this particular page you just have to be careful so that they're not catching as you pull it over so where you see this great black pearl just put your hand in there and then see I'll just show you the arrangement you can see there I've reinforced the page with this extra strip and it has metal eyelets um, just to strengthen it a little so it's actually surprisingly uh, doesn't get tangled as much as you'd expect so just flip it over and then there's a few bits here that are attached to the back of the staples so I've put your alphabet cards in here and um, one of these that you've seen from last time. So there is quite a lot of um, insect stuff in this, just because um, that was the book cover that she used. Um, for me, you'll notice actually, <laughs> if you're very clever boys and girls today, you will notice that this book is actually not very steampunked and not very Dickensian either um, but this is just my um, I was influenced by Dickens I was influenced by um, HG Wells in creating this journal um, and so this is just my take on it I guess 
so there's a little bit you know it's not a huge amount um, I drew this uh, for this journal um, he's called Magnus and you'll notice he has um, a few little steampunk um, features he has a clip round his leg here he has some uh, metal plate feathers here as a little backpack and um, down here uh, oh, a close-up might help you guys might not it so you'll see in his holding down that notebook holding open um, so he is on he's on special assignment of some sorry this is sideways this is the only way I'm going to get it under the camera um, on some undisclosed special assignment and he has stopped for a moment on this rock to have a rest and get his bearings and just check his directions so he's having a little look round and also I've done some quite a lot of uh, rusted pieces and I've just followed one of the many tutorials on YouTube I think it was just the first one that I came to oh, I'm trying to remember his name hmm. uh, well okay so uh, lots of real ledger pages I've used um, antique ledger and um, I've taken paper from two different ledgers these ones have been cut down so you'll notice um, lots of page numbers and lots of beautiful um, where the ink has run lots of lines looks very cool I've offset some of the pages like this so that you can see the the uh, staple holes from the you know just being repurposed there's quite a few of these little labels where um, somebody's been labelling their samples and discoveries. Another one here. I have um, a lovely old vintage book all about London. And I like this page because um, it has this craftsman who's making glass eyes. I don't know if you can probably see this one here. Isn't that cool? And this is one of the things that I've always been fascinated with. Not glass eyes. <laughs> but these um, little quirky speciality trades. Um, like glass blowing, like um, clock making or, or cobblers. And I've always been fascinated by uh, these old workshops and especially if if um if you go in a workshop and they have speciality tools that gets me really excited <laughs> things that have been designed for that purpose and um you know, nobody else in the world would would use them for anything but for you it's an essential part of your kit and I, I think that's really cool um so glass blowers here that's, I really like this page with the eyes looking up from the table. <laughs> so, um, some collaging. This is the other side of the London. This is all about London's smallest houses. It's quite interesting. So there's a, a house here in that little section. And there's a tiny little house there. When I see an adult on a bicycle, I do not despair for the future of the human race. That's from H.G. Wells. This is a most beautiful um, spine from an old book. Um, I've used half so that I can use the other half again. It's really lovely. It has this beautiful embossed design. Very intricate and uh, gold gilding around there and uh, I've attached a key um, this was interesting I don't know if you guys have heard of the Cottingley fairies I'm sure you probably have 
it was a famous hoax and this girl and her cousin I think um, borrowed their father's camera one father's camera and took a series of photographs without telling anybody um, in the garden with these fairies and um, it was believed for I don't know when they discovered it was a hoax I think quite a number of years later um, this is a letter from Arthur Conan Doyle who believed the story and he's writing here to um, Elsie Wright one of the sis one of the girls and um, I think one of the girls when she was grown up said that they were hoaxes and the other one held on to the story I think until she died um, she said that they were set up all but one she said one she maintained always that one photograph was real so I've I've just tried to include things that somebody in that era would have found interesting to learn about so um, some more rusted pieces this is actually a piece of lace but it does look quite cool I'm standing on tiptoes. <laughs> Sorry about the. Uh, I can just about stand on tiptoes, but I can't stand still on tiptoes. So sorry about the shaking. I've included some old patents from the patent office. Lovely old illuminated manuscript. And some pockets here, so they all open like this. Oops, one more. No. So this small one has your letter from the bookmaker, and then I've got two big tags. For the big pockets and um, I'm doing a digital kit for this um, journal and I will do a short video um, afterwards uh, showing you the kit so uh, some of the tags and envelopes are included there um, so this is the London book again uh, so some of those nice shop signs Apparently they were banned by Charles II because they were a danger of falling down. But they're quite cool. We like this sort of touristy aspect of it now. Um, I'll just show you a close-up of this because it's quite cool, this metal effect. Oh, Andy Skinner. That was him. So I followed Andy Skinner and I think he does a few, but um, I just followed the first one and it came out as I wanted it so that's fine uh, some of them um, other videos will show how you can get more texture um, but for what I wanted that was fine I have to say though the paint that he uses it's expensive and um, you know if you'd rather not shell out uh, he uses a brown paint uh, a, a brown paint and a black paint and then goes over with graphite pencil um, so if you don't want to shell out there are um, different videos that would give you other ideas um, okay so you'll see lots of texture on the pages where I've embossed and um, so much inking so much inking guys I think half the weight of this book is probably ink inkier and inkier me so um, I've done heavy tea dyeing to start with I've done some splashes um, done the embossing done the stenciling and I've distressed um, around all the pages um, in two colors I used walnut stain and black soot which gives an, um, a nice uh, kind of a heavy grungy look 
so much grungier of course than I would normally do uh, so much time to distress edges of pages <laughs> I was doing so many that I ended up timing myself because I was so bored <laughs> so I, thought, I wonder how long this is taking each page each double page was taking almost quarter of an hour because there was, there was just so much ink and that's before I was embossing before the stenciling or, or anything like that or the stamping just the distressing so I've also added some ink splashes um, I'll show you this envelope so it's, I won't open it, it's just an envelope Oh, charm. Um, made a little resin charm with. Is that going to show? So I've got an owl on one side and some steampunky stuff there, cogs and wheels. It's a Sherlock Holmes quote. So these, these pages actually die really beautifully, the ledger pages. This is the ledger you'll see with the numbers that I've cut down and the lines. And this one also is ledger, but it's quite plain. Um, very, very faint writing lines. Um, so this is the size that I went by. This is actually the size of this particular book. There are a lot of genuine pages here. Um, so some stamping, some nice staple imprints and this one I did um, sorry about the side, sideways business uh, so I've embossed the cardstock first and then cut out just just freehand cut out a mushroom shape and rusted it up There is nothing in machinery, there is nothing in embankments and railways and iron bridges and engineering devices to oblige them to be ugly. Ugliness is the measure of imperfection. That was from H.G. Wells, which I think is a really cool quote because um, steampunk is so stylish and it's all about beautiful instruments and brass and, and lovely stuff. Some Leonardo da Vinci sketches there. And that's also one of his, uh, one of the horse studies. So let me just sit down for a moment. Okay. So this section is its own signature again. So we have two tabs here that open. There's a, some extra writing. And then this just holds its own signature inside here. This is a little um, kind of a lens that I've made. So the idea is that you would hover this over your uh, book page and it reveals um, secret messages. It's like a kind of a treasure hunter's thing. So you'll see some lines that have appeared under the glass there. Oh. Okay. Some copper stamping with a fern leaf transfer. And this was a plant imprint. Um, I, I used it very watery ink. And then afterwards, when it was dry, I went over with a drawing pen. Oh, when I'm sat down, I can't see. Can you hear my tummy? <laughs> I can't see whether I'm in frame. Sorry about all the messing about today. Um, I've had to 
change the camera setup a little bit just because um, um, you know because the book is so big so some more rust this was actually a rust paint that I thought I would try uh, I don't know that it's going to focus it probably just shows black But that was quite good but I actually do prefer Andy Skinner's just for reference no that's not right so that oh, that's it. that goes like that well, I'll just read you that quote every living being is an engine geared to the wheelwork of the universe though seemingly affected only by its immediate surroundings the sphere of external influence extends to infinite distance that's from Tesla and I thought that is such a very cool quote such a a very steampunky thing to say and I wanted to include that so this slides up and down you can uh, place it where you want and just attached on the back there with more cogs I've used another very thick board cog um, just glued layers of uh, die cuts together a huge pocket here I just wanted to show you how big the pages are um, so quite a sizable book that this is a a4 paper so that's how big my biggest books normally are this page so it's about at least an inch either side of that so quite big uh, Oh, and I've forgotten to close this pocket. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, <laughs> all right, quick pause. Okay, um, so this is what's supposed to live in this pocket. So I've put some um, blueprints and more um, patents. So you have all these interesting things, typewriters. Uh, what else have we got? Planetarium, another typewriter, stopwatch. Um the reason they're not in the book is that I was going to redo these I decided I wanted them a bit bigger um, to fill the page a bit better so um, I've forgotten to do that I'll do that before the book goes out um, so you'll see that there's a spine on this section it's quite thick so you can get quite a lot of um, papers in here or just add a like your own notebook if you wanted and the idea here another big cog uh, and so this I mean this can go actually any way you like it doesn't have to wrap around all of them but it looks quite cool like that so um, I'll make sure that that's done and the reason that the book doesn't flop open properly is because of this there's a spine all round so you know that doesn't bend of course so that always stays straight so when you get to about this stage of the book what you can do is remove that book and it's going to sit a bit better for you So what I was saying about samples, this is the only thing that I have in the book, but I will have to remove this if um, if the book goes to somewhere that has restrictions on um, what you're allowed to send in the post. So some nice splashes here too. I like that page. I was very pleased with this little thing that serves no purpose. Um, I designed it to look like um, a piece out of a stamp album and I've used some glassine bag here. Um, hoping it's going to focus soon. I've backed it with some ledger so you can see the there's still one number sticking uh, visible come on camera are you going to focus 
that's better okay and then on the back just some scrapbook paper and I've just kind of partitioned here with a um, glue pen just so that it keeps them separate you could actually glue them glue the stamps in place but I didn't want to I wanted them loose um, and I've used this little pen which um, is not the strongest glue but it does have a tiny tiny uh, pen nib point so it's quite handy if you have a little corner that's sticking up and it's come unglued just to get under and, and glue with that so it's called quickie pen uh, I can't see who it's made by pinpoint roller quickie pen it's oh Sakura. there you go okay so it's just a little thing oops oh heck <laughs> okay that's gone i'll get that later uh, some of the uh, embossing if you press too hard you end up with holes so um what i sometimes do i would go in and put a pocket or something to cover it and then I thought it would be quite good to have something just visible through that so you can see the numbers. I thought that looked quite cool. Here's another plant thingy with some pen lines. Some of the labels I've put on ball chain which I really like, some bronze chain. Another envelope. I've rusted also some of that vine trim. That looks good. And this is the other section that's very stiff, so it's um, it's not going to bend and accommodate you very nicely. It's slightly badly behaved. Um, but it's another opening thing. Some of the charms are on this page. So you have a nice big pocket here. And this, um, I got the old Curiosity Shop paper pack. Um, and I've used a few of their papers here. This is just a picture that they had in the pack with some old curios, some bottles of weird stuff and a roller skate apparently. So I've just done a few layers um, raised up with uh, cogs and wheels, rusty pieces and there's a bird looking in the window. And that is the end of the first section. So I'm going to just tie that up. Okay. Right then. I think I'll sit down for this bit. So here is a um, like a cabinet and a sample specimen cabinet with a ladybird family and a bit of Latin here. Um, so again, I've done a, a 3D. It's quite thick with um, acetate covering over and some metal pieces. I think I need to move across a bit more. Um, the book, it's kind of two books really, quite a lot of it. You could go backwards, you could go forwards, I think I prefer forwards. More rusty pieces and more lots of ledger. I'm going to try and go a bit faster. The whole world is a series of miracles, but we're so used to them we call them ordinary things. A quote from Hans Christian Andersen.
is Magnus again in a kind of a variation. Um, I'm putting him in the digital kit. I'm not sure how I'm going to use him, but um, by the time you see this video, the kit will be ready um, and done. Um, this um, page, I chose this because I thought it was quite nice that it had the secondhand bookshops there but um, what I didn't realise till later uh, it says here London is the most wonderful city in the world well um, <laughs> I grew up in London and that's questionable but we'll carry on it has never been equaled and is never likely to be surpassed it contains within itself every aspect of life and of human nature all the things man builds for himself with his hands or only sees with the eyes of vision. It is kind and cruel, ugly and beautiful, drab and many coloured, full of hopes and despairs, loves and hates, prayers and cursings, sin and holiness, worldliness and unworldliness, the gold and purple of Tyre and the rags of Lazarus. And I thought that fitted really well with the um, steampunk idea but actually quite by accident i'm just going to show you a close-up so i've used some more um uh oh <laughs> ah hang on <laughs> oh, right oh uh, if you could see what i was doing guys and i can't contortion this this morning um so uh, i can't even see if that shows where i'm standing it's kind of another embossed like that mushroom was but looks quite cool, uh, embossed and then rusted with the cogs and wheels. I'm not even sure how you would do uh, steampunk without die cuts and stencils. <laughs> I don't know what I'd be doing. I'm stitching here and um, if you will forgive me, there's a little section here that I wanted to read as well. Uh, it talks about, um, because it's secondhand bookshops, there's a curious pleasure in looking at old books, just as there is a curious pleasure in reading catalogues and speculati speculating on what you might possess. Uh, plenty of people own mental libraries. They know what they would buy if they had the wherewithal. And merely to gaze at books, merely to handle them, gives them a sort of yearning satisfaction. And I thought that was so lovely for us as junk journalists. Um, it was a really nice sentiment. Um, and he even mentions here, quite by accident, an old curiosity shop type of mind. So isn't that cool? More patents of a weird horse blankie. It's kind of a good thing that some of these patents didn't make it actually looking at them. <laughs> I think we're living in a very different world. So this is another section with a spine. I've put some nice metal corners on here. So there's a lot of space here. I've just put in there all the um, journaling cards that I didn't have room for in the end on the pages. So they're all there, various curiosities. This is another Leonardo one, which we know, I don't have to tell you that. But you'll notice the strategically placed, not a fig leaf, but close enough. And this one, I was actually in two minds to put this in, um, because it's, it's about curiosities. And um, I didn't want it to look like a freak show. That That's the reason I've put this photograph in. Um, but um, people in Victorian times, you know, and us, you know, today we, we do find interesting people who are different to ourselves. Um, so I wanted it for that angle. Just you can be curious about something without wanting to... Uh, you know, commit genocide or something um, to be extreme. 
but I thought this photograph was really beautiful, a very beautiful um, American Indian man with his costume there. Look at his face. It's a really haunting photo. I'm wondering what he's doing in a Western studio, to be honest. I don't know. There was no information with it. Um, his name is Dustmaker. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest name ever? I really like this. So it, it was just, um, you know, out of curiosity. People did find other races curious. And you can be curious without being mean. You can just be curious for curiosity's sake. So um, I decided in the end that I would put that in. So that's the alphabet practice. Just added a steampunky type thing to the background. And these um, fainter... Oh, I'll show you actually on the index card. That will be easier. Um, this gorgeous Alice portrait. More stitching round and more journaling cards. Another spine section. Um, with another removable notebook. So, and two pages here. So, again, you could replace this if you wanted. And on the back, why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. So, weird Victorian lady, fairy lady. There. She looked as though she yeah, that was something that she might say. Actually, I'm not sure who said that. I don't think it was Alice, was it? Was it somebody at the tea party? I don't know. Maybe the Queen? The quote on this one says, Logic will take you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. From Mr Einstein. And I thought that was such a cool quote to put in a steampunk journal because it is all about your imagination really since it never actually happened <laughs> then the sky's the limit um, I've put a rusted frame around Alice here and these stamps I've had in my stash just been in the cupboard for about I don't know must be over 10 years I've never used them but I thought that was really cool to do a kind of a, a dress book type thing. Uh, I don't think there's anything on those pages. And I've cut a die cut leather out of the cover leather and put it on this uh, rusted trellis. A definition for coleopterology or beetling. Apparently, as it's known. Um, some weird locusts that they had in medieval times. So this is kind of about the stories and collections that and weird and wonderful stuff that this person has heard about and is doing research about. Another cut out uh, rusted mushroom. Another embossed rusted mushroom. And I've uh, dripped here with a beeswax candle. That looks really cool. I used to do this for pirate maps for the children when they were young. I liked this uh, illustration. Uh, I don't think it's meant to be a uh, fantasy, but the way that the metal... Uh, the way that the the armour plating on the insect has been drawn, it kind of looks like metal especially. You see here, along its back. So I thought that was cool. And very steampunky. Um, this is a, another uh, medieval 
manuscript of a, a strange collection. Um, and if <laughs> look away now if you don't want to know what happens in the time machine <laughs> in the book. Um, the, the film is kind of different. The film, they've, they've made it into a, a sort of adventure. Uh, um, they've attached a love story to it as well, which doesn't happen in the book. But um, there's the ending of the book, so don't look. Um, this. Thank you, Nick the Booksmith. <laughs> like the coolest die cut ever. I absolutely love it. And so it arrived just in time to um, finish the journal. So thank you for that. So she showed she was showing us um, this recently on her video. That's uh, White Rabbit in Latin. And so I've just put in here a couple of the um, cutouts from the paper pack and two tags that I've made. Like that. Like that. So what I've done with mine is uh, rusted the surface and put some rusty brads in as well onto the corners to make it metally. And the white rabbit seemed very appropriate to um, end with. Um, and oh, I have to do another quick pause. Okay. So um, I have taken these out because I'm using them on the digital kit. Um, so just to show you, um, I've done some, I used my die cut again and got these shapes and um, put them in the oven, wet the, uh, it's like exactly the same as a doily print, whatever your preferred method for doily prints is, and I know people do them differently, um, you just do it exactly the same. And you get these cool kind of stenciled effects. Oh. So that's just with tea dyeing. That's exactly how they came out of the oven. And um, so these and these were together in here. So I'm just going to put those aside for the kit for now. But they will be in your book for um, just as, you know, spares for writing. There's a couple of quotes here to show you. And so this is really cool. Charles Dickens said this. Uh, regarding the electric telegraph but they've kind of adapted it as a, for a modern setting electric communication uh, they call it will never be a substitute for a face of a man with his soul in it encouraging another man to be brave and true and i thought that was so fitting um as, even more in our world today than it was in dickens time that's very cool and there's this Jack London quote that I use a lot. And another Dickens to pause and read. Okay, so um, they go in here. This says, please take one. Oh, and I'll just show you the... Um, a close-up if I can of the rust because this piece came out really good there so you can see just along the edges there um, where the graphite pencil gives it a kind of as though the, the metal has just been worn along the edges I've put I'm just try and inch my fingers along <laughs> <laughs> like an inchworm put some rusty uh, ring on there and you'll notice this one has just fallen out it's just empty because it's so old and see on that side and along here I've just done some um, just went over a little bit with um, what's it called gilding wax a bit of copper and that gave a, a nice finish to to it okay so so that's a nice thick pocket again um, and then I have these little bits to show you I've managed to bend that page oh, 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Oh, and I've nearly forgotten to show you that. So this is actually the little notebook that Magnus holds in his talon. This is one of those um, things that you find in charity shops a lot here, quite often. Um, I think people buy them on their holidays. It's like a little money purse. I've removed the back section just to make it a bit thinner. Um, but you have get these cool pockets in them. And I always like them when I see them. And I have had two in my drawer for ages and I never know what to do with them. They're actually no good as a purse because they don't fit our money. Um, and I've removed the um, plastic trim that they often come with along the edges because it kind of looks a bit tacky. But the leather is really worn on this one. It's really lovely. So I'll definitely be buying everyone that I see in future. So I've just made that into a notebook. A Walt Whitman quote. There's a little vintage stamp. So this is uh, designed to look like the um, the notebook that Magnus holds. Um, which does, I did originally have it in one of those thick pockets, but um, I think the book sits better if it's not in there, so you can do what you want with that one. Um, okay, so in here... We have an elastic closure over a clockwork and I've put a washer under the face of the clock there so that the elastic has room to get under. Some metal corners. There's a little box that unscrews. I haven't done it but you could put a little scroll in there. It's a nice brass fitting. Um, this I found in an antique shop. I don't think it is antique, but it's pretty old and it looks cool. Another clockwork. Um, some spare labels for her specimens. A little pencil stub, a little stub of candle wax, uh, wax seal. This is one of those super cool wind-up keys. I love those. This is included perhaps because it was new technology that was discovered. It's a piece of very beautiful agate stone. And these two little things, is that all of them? There's an extra pen nib. This is a magnifying glass um, that closes with a magnet and so that's designed just to use in your book. And this little cock. So these are actually surprisingly nicely designed. They're, they're only cheap um, Chinese bits. Just seeing if it will focus for me. Um, you know, very inexpensive. It's not going to, is it? Okay, but, um, you know, a nice little trinket to include. And the paper I'm just putting so that they don't rattle around when uh, I pick up the book for you. But you don't have to have that in. So that snaps shut and it's quite secure. Um, and then this you see is the music box. Um, one other little story that I wanted to tell you that I forgot that um, when I was a little girl, uh, oh goodness, this is already more than an hour, sorry. <laughs> when I was a little girl, try to be quick, I used to go and visit um, an old lady who lived at the end of our street. Um, who was a very cool person she kind of took me under her wing a bit and I used to visit her she used to let me read to her and um, she was very influential in my um, in my Englishness <laughs> I should say <laughs> um, she had a typewriter and she used to let me read her uh, play with her typewriter 
and you know we'd talk and she'd tell me stories um the the typewriter was just absolutely fascinating to me um and i've always had i think a fascination for uh mechanical things and things that um things that are not powered except by turning a handle or pressing keys or or something like that um like like clocks like typewriters um and i had one of these music boxes when i was young and i remember hours and hours and hours just days looking at it going round and round picking up the the notes as it goes around so i thought it was really cool to um include this mechanism um uh, so that it's showing so that I've done a metal faux metal plate here and I've used this little box section to cover up the the plastic section of the um, of the music box so that you can just see this cool metal part <clears throat> um, this lady was um, she introduced me to the flower fairies actually she she had bought me uh, one of the um the seasons books all the seasons books and um i think that was where my love of wildflowers and things like that um started to be honest um i had learned all the the names of the plants and memorized so many of the poems when i was little um of course <laughs> i don't know them anymore <laughs> that's what age does to you i'm afraid and um not using skills that you have <clears throat> so i'm in the process now of um learning learning these plant names again um and one more thing to show you and i think this is my favorite part this is you've seen these already on instagram so i have done this little box here and there is a I'll stand up there is a ribbon to help you get these out um last time when i was um when I had made those butterfly photographic slides that you saw a minute ago or 45 minutes ago um, when I had made those for the last book I decided I would look on eBay and um, see if I could get some vintage microscope slides so um, sadly they turned out to be very expensive and um, <clears throat> not not cost effective at all if you're selling a book um but you know if you were doing that as a if you're making yourself a journal and doing it as a hobby um very very beautiful things um these old victorian slides that you it would be quite an investment um you know i mean you're not going to make money off them but a personal um, would be nice to invest the money in for your own personal pleasure that's what i'm trying to say so I can't remember now because it was like a month ago, but I think I actually got this from eBay and I've just printed it on here because there was space on the page so it doesn't have to be on tracing paper. Um, the point I'm trying to make is it looks transparent here because it's on tracing paper. But when you, um, I don't know if you've ever been really close to a, you don't want to get too close to a live spider I imagine, but um, if they're dead I don't, I don't mind having a, a good close look and sometimes you get these tiny little spiders that you find like on the windowsill or something and they're so delicate and so fine and so thin that they do actually look transparent so the point of all that rambling is that I've just copied what I saw here and what I did instead of putting a spider in here I've just painted that with watercolour and it looks quite effective um, and I've just done the rest of the slide I've used glass microscope slides and I, I really like the feel of the glass over the acetate um, for one thing you don't get the static and they're kind of a bit heavier of course can you see how they've done this it's actually a hand-drawn design so as well as this being a functional something for study, um, something for research, they've taken the time to make it beautiful as well. And I think that's really cool. So um, 
I've just copied that basically, the same design. <clears throat> I'll show you these butterfly ones. So that's one spider, two butterflies. And I've just, I've done it on tracing paper. I've just printed them. And so if you do it that way, you don't have to cut out two layers. That actually looks quite good. So I've done one without notes and one with notes like this. Not doing a very good job of showing you, sorry. So that's what that looks like. So guys, um, the journal will be for sale. Um, the day that I post the video, I'm going to... Excuse my tummy rumbling. I'm going to um, put it for sale 10 p.m. GMT time. That's British time. Um, and so if you, you can just Google GMT time and it will tell you what time it is in your country. Um, so 10 p.m., 10 in the evening, um, on the day that you see this video. I'm not sure what. It's not today for me, but it's today for you. And um, after this video, you will see also if you're interested in a digital kit that goes with this journal, um, there'll be a digital kit video. So just, um, <coughs> excuse me, just probably about 10 minutes uh, following this to show you the kit and um, we'll let you know that it's for sale on the website. So... <coughs> Oh, so sorry. <laughs> my tummy's rumbling, my throat's going up. Obviously, I've been talking for too long. Um, if you're still here and you haven't fallen asleep or gone into a coma, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate your support and um, that you're interested in what I have to say. Um, I will see you next time. Bye, folks. <laughs>